One of the most important parts of any moto camping trip is actually getting your moto camping gear to where you're camping. So let's talk about some moto camping packing tips and hints that'll hopefully make your next trip even more enjoyable. A lot of people who make moto camping content, myself included, are out there with luggage systems that cost a lot of money, thousands of dollars in some cases. So it can be easy to get the impression that you have to spend a lot of money to get out and go motorcycle camping because luggage is such a huge investment. But the first tip for moto camping packing is that you don't actually need motorcycle luggage. Now it does make things easier and I think most people end up there because of how much easier it makes things, particularly if you're doing it a lot. But if you're just getting started and you don't want to drop $600 on a bag for your bike, you don't have to. There's many ways to get your camping gear to the campsite. First, backpacks. Backpackers do it all the time. You can throw your gear in a big backpack and ride out to wherever you're camping. Now that doesn't make the ride very fun when you're wearing a big backpack, but you can also just strap that backpack to the back of your bike, depending on what you're riding and how you're getting there and what kind of terrain you're riding. But a backpack is one option. A big duffel bag is another option. You can go buy a 40 liter duffel bag at Walmart and strap that to the back of your bike. It's gonna get your gear there. It's not waterproof or anything like that. And again, a giant bag right on top of your bike is not ideal, but it is a good way to get started and get out there and start camping, get your gear to where you're going. Another great option that's a little bit better than the duffel bag is a big dry bag. I actually started with a giant $18 clearance Walmart rafting dry bag and an old Walmart tent strapped to the top of my Versus 650. You can get a lot of gear in those dry bags and also if you're caught in a sudden storm, unexpected weather changes, your gear is gonna stay dry so it's kind of a win-win. So those bags are super useful. Another way to go moto camping without needing a bunch of moto camping luggage is don't camp in a tent. I know, controversial. Are you saying go camping without going camping? No. You can camp in a yurt or a cabin, get the campfire experience, get the cooking outside experience, but you don't have to take as much stuff because your shelter is taken care of. You're still gonna need to carry a sleeping bag and stuff. Generally, those places don't have bedding, but particularly if you're just dipping your toe into the world of moto camping for the first time, that's a great way to get started without having to carry a bunch of gear and therefore not needing a bunch of luggage. Speaking of luggage, there are a bunch of different kinds of luggage and it helps to kind of think about the differences when you're starting to think about packing gear on your motorcycle. When people think motorcycle luggage, I think the most obvious and first thing that comes to mind is panniers. Panniers are giant bags that go on either side of the rear of the motorcycle. They make hard panniers, they make soft panniers, and those allow you to carry a lot of stuff and have a lot of advantages like keeping your motorcycle from tipping all the way over if you drop it. But they can also be pretty expensive because you have to buy the bags or the cases and the racks to mount them on yourself. So panniers is one option, but another less expensive option is rackless motorcycle luggage, like the Giant Loop Coyote or Great Basin or the Tusk Highland or the Moscow rackless setups. Those bags are a little bit less expensive and they don't require you to buy a rack. So you can just slap it on the back of your bike, strap it on, put your camping gear in and go. And those can move from bike to bike as well, which is nice. Some people just run a top case, which is just a big hard case that mounts on the back rear of your bike. Some bikes even come with that, like the KLR 650 Traveler. Another option is, like I said already, a dry bag. I like the Giant Loop Tillamook dry bag, 50 liters, opens on both ends, and it's got an integrated system that allows you to quickly and easily strap it to the top of your bike. It's like a soft top case for your bike that's waterproof and a lot less expensive. You also can just run the duffel bag or the backpack, like I said, strap those to the back of your bike. Those big bags on the rear of your bike are not the only option. There are things like pannier pockets, a handlebar bag, a tank bag, and those things will allow you to either carry smaller pieces of moto camping gear or get your other stuff that you need for riding like sunglasses, earplugs, your toolkit out of the bags you're using for moto camping so that you have more room for your camping gear. Tip number two is there are all kinds of different types of motorcycle camping luggage, including some that isn't actually motorcycle luggage. Tip number three, which is super important for the riding part, which is sort of an integral part of motorcycle camping, is pack the heaviest items as low and as close to the motorcycle as possible. This is a tip you hear all the time. Let me tell you why it's important, and the key is right there in the word tip. Imagine this. You have a giant fat cat that you're trying to get out of a tree. You put a ladder up against the tree, and the second you do, the cat jumps onto the ladder, and the ladder is immediately standing straight up like this. 20 feet in the air, giant fat cat. He's on the very top rung. How easy is it gonna to be to keep that ladder from tipping and what happens when it starts to tip? How easy is it to stop? Great, now imagine same situation but the cat is on the middle of the ladder. He's only 10 feet up. 
How much easier is it gonna be to stop that ladder from tipping one way or the other? Cool, now think about the cat being on the bottom rung. How much easier is it gonna be to stop that ladder from tipping one way or the other? So same cat, same weight, height matters, particularly on a tall bike like an adventure bike or a dual sport where some of us are barely getting our feet down to begin with. The last thing we need is that thing to have a lot of momentum when it starts tipping before we even get our foot down. So that's why people always advise you to put your heavy items, that is your toolkit, stuff like that, as low and as close to the motorcycle as possible so that you're not dealing with tippy top heaviness particularly on uneven ground which we often encounter when we're trying to get to places where we're motorcycle camping tip number four pack the stuff you need first last gonna change your shoes when you get there do you hate clomping around in your motorcycle boots i definitely do then pack those last they need to be on top of your bag you're gonna set up your tent first well that makes sense pack your tent on top of your topmost bag so you can get it out first bonus tip your tent footprint should be the last thing that goes into the tent bag, so it comes out first, you can lay it down and start setting up your tent. Let's say you're planning a lunch stop along the way. We'll put that food in your bag last, so it's on top, so you're not digging around in your pan, you're trying to get it out. Same thing if you're gonna cook like a dehydrated meal, like a peak refuel or something, make sure that your jet boil is also easily accessible. It should be on top, easy to get to, one of the last things you pack. Are you gonna arrive in camp after dark? Well, make sure your headlamp and your tent light are on on top of your bag is one of the last things you pack. And if you're the type of person to roll into camp and do things out of order and skip step one and go straight to step two, well, I'll make sure that your preferred beverage is on top of your bags so you can get to it quickly and easily when you get to camp without digging through everything. Tip number five, whenever possible, Pack the house in a separate bag and keep that bag on top of your other bags. By the house, I mean your shelter and sleeping setup. So tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, pillow. If you can keep those separate on top of your bike in a separate dry bag, then when you arrive at camp, you're not rummaging through all your bags trying to get out the five things that you need first. This kind of ties into the previous tip, but also is its own separate entry because there are other advantages to packing the house in a separate bag on top of your bike, one of which is those are some of the light items in your kit right they're bulky but they're not heavy so your tent your sleeping bag your sleeping pad so if it's in a dry bag on top of your other bags or on top of your bike it's not going to contribute to the tippiness and it's going to be easy to get to immediately when you get to camp that's one of my favorite ways to do things pack the house separately tip number six Check your straps, obviously before you leave, but also when you're out on the trail, particularly if you're riding off road, or even if you're not, 70 mile an hour winds, plus crappy pavement, plus things shift and resettle inside your bags. So every time you stop, it's worth just kind of looking at your bags and making sure things are strapped where they're supposed to be. You don't want the dry bag that your toiletries are in to come loose and end up in front of your exhaust and melt your glasses. You don't want to lose your battery pack that's strapped to the top of your dry bag because you're trying to charge it solar. And you definitely don't want to lose your fender bag with all your tire changing kit and everything else in it in the middle of the desert because you didn't check the straps. Ask me how I know, literally all those things have happened to me. And tip number seven, use a packing checklist. I have gone moto camping, I can't tell you how many times, hundreds of times at least. I always forget something when I'm packing. I have a checklist that I like to run down just to make sure I have everything because you don't want to get out there and realize you forgot your pillow or even worse, your toilet paper in the middle of nowhere where you're not going to be able to access those things. Moto Camp Nerd just happens to have a very convenient free list that you can download. I'll put a link in the description for you. That's an interactive PDF that you can use to check off every time you set up, but you can also make your own list or take that list and make a variation of it or whatever, but it is worth a couple minutes it takes to just run down the list after you've packed everything just to be like, oh crap, I forgot that. Cash for campsites or a check, a blank check to write to pay for a campground fee is something I forget often. I've just started carrying it in my wallet, but stuff like that is important, so I recommend using a camping checklist to make sure you've packed everything you need. And bonus eighth tip, shop at Moto Camp nerd because moto camp nerd is the world's best and only store dedicated to the needs of motorcycle campers every single piece of gear on there has been vetted and tested so you know it's going to pack small and work well and last and be good for you and your needs for hopefully a very long time we here at moto camp nerd want you to have the best possible motorcycle camping experience and that's why we sell all the gear so that you can pack small and camp easy